not in the strong name of our collective faith, but in the name of Jesus, only Jesus. Philippians 2 and 10 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee shall bow. Of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth.
Can you say amen today? Praise God. Jesus rescued me. Praise God. He came to where I was. He reached down further than I could reach up. But he found me and brought me out and set me free. Praise God. It's good to be in church today to worship the Lord. Praise God. It's good to see you here in the house of God. We appreciate all of you coming to be with us. I wonder, do we have any first-time visitors here today? Anybody here for the very first time? Back over here. Anyone else? Any returning visitors? We're glad to have you. Can we see your hand? You've been here before, but you came back for more. God bless you. Amen. Would you give them my hand? Amen. Thank you so much for coming today. We still have a number of our people that are not able to attend. They watch online all of our services, and we appreciate them doing that. We pray that they can feel what we're feeling in here today. We'll remind you of service tonight at 6.30, back here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock for our Bible study. I've been enjoying our variety of teachers this coming Wednesday night. Brother Ed Baker will be teaching. The young people will be out here as well, so you don't want to miss out on that. And then next Sunday is going to be Men's Day. We have our state evangelism director, Brother Matt Gunter, and his wife will be with us in service for the morning service, so you don't want to miss out on that. It's going to be a very special day. So pray that God will give us a, a great week this week and recognize and know that we are running out of time and everything is contingent upon the coming of the Lord. I believe that we're the generation that's going to see the second coming of Jesus Christ. I believe he's coming. He's coming soon. And I'm praying as the Apostle John prayed, even so, come Lord Jesus. Would you stand as we go to the Lord in prayer? Pray for all the many needs today. I'm sure you have Many requests, many of our people are sick, many are going through different battles and variety of difficulties. We know prayer makes a difference. We have a number of people that we've been praying for in our state, and we've been hearing good reports of how they're getting better and better and better. Many of them very, very sick. But God is bringing them out, bringing them through, and we thank God for that. Because prayer works, doesn't it? Prayer makes a difference. Pray for this service today for God to have his way. Our Father, we're so thankful to you for the privilege of prayer, for the opportunity of worship. Thank you for keeping us this week for the prayers you've already answered, needs that have already been met. But Lord, we come to you today asking of you once again for your divine visitation with us, that you would come down upon this service ministry unto every heart and every soul, touching those today who are watching online, that they will feel your presence. We pray your anointing upon all that's said, all that's done today. We need your touch. We need your help and your strength. We pray, God, that you would bless in a great and mighty way. We give you glory and praise and honor for all these things. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Would you take a moment now and welcome one another as comfortably as you feel so doing. Welcome one another to the Matthews Church of God. Let's continue worship in our tithes and offering. From Psalm 73, 26. My flesh may fail me, and my heart also, but my strength cometh from the Lord. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Let's continue to worship him because he has never failed us. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the sweet spirit that we feel here today. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercy, your hope, and your grace, Lord, that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. Father, may this offering be honorable and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen.
stand to your feet and give God praise. We have so much to praise him for. Come on, can we just lift our hands to him today? God, we give you praise and adoration. Lord, there's none beside you. And we cry, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. For your mercies are new every morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, most high. 
trust you. I give my problems, my anxieties to you today, God. Oh, come on, softly sing.
Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, I feel him here today. Praise God, I feel him. Hallelujah, thank you singers and musicians. Thank you so much for allowing us to come before the presence of God today through singing. Thank God for good singing and good music. What a blessing it is. Praise God. I feel God's touch. I pray that he'll touch us today in a mighty way and that we will recognize and know where we are on God's timeline, God's schedule, that we are in the last days. Just remain standing, if you will, please, for the reading of the scripture. I want to read in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings. Genesis chapter 6, reading verses 5 through 7. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. I want to begin a message this morning on the flood before the flood, the flood before the flood. Would you pray with me to ask God's anointed touch today? Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together today. Lord, we sent your wholesome presence. We sent your holy anointing here today. Lord, we desire to hear what you're saying to the church, what you're saying to us individually and corporately. Let us today, Lord, be reminded once again of this late hour, the urgency, the necessity to seek your face and draw nearer to you. Help us to lay aside the weights and sins that so easily beset us. Help us, Lord, to throw off the yoke of bondage, to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, to offer to you praise and adoration and exaltation. We welcome you, Holy Spirit of God. We welcome your manifestation, your demonstration, your anointing, your touch, and your help today. I pray, God, that you would minister to me and through me. I pray that you would break up the fallow ground. I pray that you would soften the soil to receive the seed of the word, that it will bring forth a great harvest. Lord, we thank you today for the blessings you've already given and for what you're about to do. We give you glory and honor, for it's in the lovely, holy name of Jesus Christ we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I don't know about you, but I am thoroughly convinced that we are living in the last days. Yet I'm surprised at how many people are living as though these are the first days rather than the last days. But Jesus said that's how it would be when he returns. Matthew 24, 37, for, but as the days, but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It was business as usual. It was sinning as usual up to the very day of the flood. Verse 38, for as in that in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. There was a flood of evil before there was a flood of judgment. It was a flood of evil that demanded the flood of judgment. God takes sin very seriously. Verse 5, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Sin was so great in the earth 
until it was widespread and deeply rooted. He was only evil continually because man had cast off all moral restraint and he indulged in every sin, every sin that anyone could imagine, man indulged in. And it so angered God that he said in verse 7, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing, the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. The RSV says, I will blot out man whom I have created. The earth was corrupt before God. It was immoral. It was unethical, it was dishonest, it was crooked, it was shady, it was fraudulent. All of these things filled the land. And this flood shows God's hatred for sin. It shows the severity of the judgment for sin. And just as sure as water boils at 212 degrees, that when sin reaches a certain point, judgment is imminent. God saw, verse 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. God saw with sorrowing reverence, Moses writes under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost about this widespread wickedness. It is the wickedness of man and man alone. The degradation was worldwide and God saw it. God sees everything. He says in 2 Chronicles 16 and 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Proverbs 15 and 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Man's heart is the seat of emotions and seat of affections. And it says every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. There were schemes, there were plans, there were purposes that were conceived in the heart. Every imagination, every idea, every notion, every feeling, Every passion, every inclination was only evil. Evil is the offspring of the devil. There was only evil, only evil in the land. There was no ray of light. There was no spark of goodness. There was no hint of righteousness. Only evil in the land. There was only evil continually. Evil never took a day off. There was a flood of evil before there was a flood of judgment. But the people were so engrossed in their sins until they could not see the storm clouds of judgment that were gathering. They were too caught up in the activities of that day, caught up with the cares of life, caught up with worries, caught up with pleasure. They were too busy eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage to listen to the message of salvation. They were too busy. People have been lulled asleep. People have gone to sleep and they've been brought into a false sense of security. A false sense of security by the academic and the medical communities, by the politicians and by the media. People have been lulled asleep by all the things that they're hearing. When Noah's voice was drowned out in that day by all their evil activities, by all the voices of that day, they were not listening to the man of God. He was a preacher of righteousness, the Bible says, and he was warning the people of the judgment that was coming. He was warning them of what was about to take place. A preacher of righteousness preaches with a holy fever. He preaches with fire. He preaches with fervency. He preached with tears, warning them of the judgment that was coming on the earth. See, Noah's life, of obedience was a witness and it was also a condemnation to the way the people were living. They were without excuse because if Noah could live righteously, if Noah could live godly in the midst of such a wicked 
and perverse generation anyone could. Where are those preachers today? Where are those preachers of righteousness today? Isaiah says in Isaiah 56 and 10, his watchmen are blind. They're all ignorant. They're all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 5 and 31, the prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule by their means and my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? People have been fed a steady diet of cotton candy sermons until they're suffering from spiritual malnutrition. People have heard so much false doctrine. They've heard so much false prophecy until they're left confused by what's going on in the world today. Many have bought into this kingdom now theology until they tried to make it happen. They tried to make it happy. It's one thing to, to give a false prophecy. It's another thing to try to fulfill or bring that false prophecy to come to pass. They were convinced that the trump sounded because of the last president's name and they even prophesied that he would be reelected. Visions of sugar plums danced in their head and they got all giddy thinking about the kingdom now and the righteous taking over the earth and the righteous inheriting the, the riches of the wicked. People got all excited about it. But then when the trump was silenced, people became confused. They said, I don't understand this. It was prophesied. Uh, the trump is here. The trump has arrived. The trump has sounded. And we're going to have kingdom now. And the world's going to be changed and turned around. But I want to tell you this morning, I'm not confused. Because I know the call to assembly is not coming from a man. It's coming from an angel. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of an archangel and the trump of God. I'm not looking to a man. I've got my eye on the prize. I've got my hand on the plow. I've got my feet on the promise. I'm looking to Jesus Christ. Not to a man. Not to a political de department. I'm not looking to Capitol Hill or to Washington or anywhere else. I'm looking to Jesus because he is coming again just like he said. Don't you think for one minute that God's plans can be prevented or thwarted or sidetracked or derailed by a political party? He that shall come will come and will not tarry. I was talking to someone the other day and they said, you know, we're not hearing a lot of folks, a lot of preachers preaching about the end time or the coming of the Lord. They're still preaching the same old stuff about how to feel better about yourself, how to be successful in life, how to get this and get that and get promotions here and there. They're not hearing about that. But I want to tell you the message of this hour is that Jesus is coming soon. It was the same message that John the Baptist preached in that first century. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's the same message that the apostle Paul preached who said he will come again. The same message that John preached when he said even so come Lord Jesus. For he said behold I come quickly. I I want to tell you, I believe this is the generation that's going to see the second coming of Jesus Christ. I'm not waiting around to meet the Antichrist. I met Jesus Christ when I was nine years old and what a friend he's been to me. He's a constant companion and he tells me every day that we must be ready. We must be watching. We must be waiting for his return. There are those who are confused in the church world today. Because they say, I don't understand this. Things didn't go the way they thought they were going to go. I heard some of them. Oh, they said, thus saith the Lord. The Lord said, you're going to be reelected. The, the Lord says, you're going to be this and you're going to be that. This is going to happen in the land. It didn't happen. Many of them have, have had to apologize for giving out a false prophecy. Sometimes you can want something so bad until you can just kind of speak it and think it's going to happen. But if God didn't say it, it's not going to happen. Your words are not more powerful than God's word. But then on the other side of that, there are those who think all is well now. Everything is fine. They said they feel relieved. This is what they're saying. They feel so relieved now that the election is over. 
They can feel better. They can breathe better. They have more peace. Even their dog is sleeping better, they said. But you see, the devil will lull you to sleep. The devil will put you to sleep. The scripture is still the same. Proverbs 14, 34, righteousness, righteousness exalteth a nation. Sin is a reproach unto any people. All nations that forget God will be turned into hell, the Bible says. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again today. I'm going to go on record. Everything I say is recorded so I know that. I'm going to say it again today. The two major things that you're seeing happening, they have all this other stuff they talk about. There's two major things that this is all about. It's about abortion and it's about perversion. The two major things at the root of all this that's going on, this is why they fought so hard. This is why they spent so much money. This is why they, they've tried to silence the righteous is because they want to live in their sin and they don't want anyone to stop them. They say, silence the Christian crowd. Silence the church crowd. We want to live as we please. And they've embraced abortion and they've embraced perversion and they said, leave us alone. This week, the first week on the job, first week on the job of this administration has picked the first transgender person in history to be the assistant health secretary. And they're proud of that. They're proud of that. They declare their sins of Sodom and they hide them not. They've appointed LGBTQ leaders to prominent positions in the administration. He has stated that young children, young children as, long, as young as eight years old should be able to change their gender identities without any discrimination. He has counseled gender discrimination in American sports. That simply means that a man who trans into a woman can participate in women's sports and that a woman that trans into a man can participate in men's sports and that a transgender person can go into the restroom or the locker room of their choice. And they're proud of that. They're proud of that. This administration has committed, they said this week, to codify and Roe v. Wade and appointing judges that protect the right to abortion on demand. I want to tell you that's at the root of it. It is a demonic wave. It is a demonic flood that's coming upon the land. Don't you ever think that we're going to be lifted up and elevated? Don't ever think that that's going to cause our nation to rise up above other nations. It's going to be the downfall of of our nation. Sin is a reproach unto any people. Oh God help us to repent of our sins and to call upon the name of the Lord. It's wrong. It's wrong in America. It's wrong in China. It's wrong in Africa. It's wrong in South America. It's wrong all over this world. God gave us life. He's the creator of life. He's the sustainer of life. Oh praise God. We've never experienced anything like we're experiencing now. Never have we ever experienced. It's unprecedented. There's a pandemic that's all around the world. Not isolated to one place, but all around the world. We're on the brink, on the brink of an economic collapse that could very easily rival the Great Depression. Social unrest. It reminds me of the upheavals, worse than those upheavals of the 1960s. There's a lockdown that has taken place that we've never experienced before. It's not coincidence that these things are going hand in hand. There is a great deception taking place. It's only going to increase. The deception is here. And I've got news for those who think they're just dealing with a swamp. We are dealing with a flood. It's not a swamp, it's a flood. It's a flood of evil that's come upon the land. Wickedness, iniquity, ungodliness is upon the land. And there's going to be a flood as it was in Noah's day, a flood of iniquity, a flood of sin, a flood of wickedness before a flood of judgment. And we're on the brink of that happening. Floodwaters have been known to have high levels of bacteria and viruses and vermin, and sewage, and snakes, parasites, 
Sharp objects, they're dangerous. They tell you, stay out of the floodwaters. But oh, there's a flood water of, of iniquity that's far worse than the natural floods of the land. Flood waters are, are difficult. The flood waters are, are prevailing in the land today. There's a flood of iniquity, and we are in serious trouble. It only takes six inches of water to knock you off of your feet. Only a foot of water can cause a car, a vehicle to be sent streaming down the, down the road. But oh, if we don't escape this iniquity, if we don't escape this flood, it will wash us away. No wonder the psalmist said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. We've got to head to higher ground. We've got to get on higher ground. We've got to get on the king's highway. We've got to move up a little bit higher. We've got to climb up a little bit higher. Don't stay in the steep of iniquity. Don't stay in the flood waters of sin. Reach up and take hold of the hand of the Lord, the same hand that pulled you out of the miry clay, the same hand that pulled you out of the pit, the same hand that lifted you out and made you whole. He'll lift us up above the shadows. He'll lift us up on higher ground. He's a shelter. Shelter covered from the storm. Satan knows his time is short. And he has unleashed a flood of evil upon the land that threatens to destroy everything in his path. You've never seen things like they are now. There's a flood of immorality. A flood of profaneness as it was in Noah's day and Lot's day. We're witnessing a flood of deception and doctrinal error that's flooding into the church. They're flooding into the church. Who do you believe? Who do you listen to? Isaiah 59, 19 says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood. This flood of evil is separating many people from God and their faith. This flood of evil will cut you off from the church. It'll cut you off from the people of God and it will cut you off from God if you aren't careful. The devil is relentless in attacking our faith. That's why so many are struggling. That's why so many are, are yielding and giving in to temptation. That's why so many are giving up. They, they say it's the, the battle is too hard. But I want to tell you the battle is the Lord's. It's not your battle. He'll fight the battle for you because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ our Lord. No matter what the devil throws at you, no matter what you have to go through, you have power in the name of Jesus Christ. You have power in the blood of the Lamb. You have power in the Holy Ghost. You have power in the Word of God. Oh, praise God. Victory is ours in Jesus Christ forever. Hallelujah. The enemy will come in like a flood. and People are being swept away. Families are being flooded by demonic ways of attack. And they're being swept away. Marriage after marriage is under attack and being destroyed. Young people are being flooded away by sin. The church is under demonic attack as the enemy comes flooding in. The enemy comes into the church to try to distress the church. Believers are under assault of the enemy. You have a difficult time trying to pray through. You have a difficult time trying to worship. You have a difficult time trying to read the word of God because the enemy has come in like a flood. The enemy is trying to divert your attention. He's trying to discourage you. He's trying to distract you. He's flooded in against us. He'll come into the house of worship to try to distract you from hearing the word of God because he knows faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh, how we need to hear the word. How we need the word of God preached. How we need the word of God read. How we we need the word of God sung. How we need the word of God proclaimed. It's our weapon of offense. If you want to defeat the devil, get full of the word. Get full of the word of God. Let the word of God be in your bones. Let it be in your marrow. Let it be shut up in you like fire. You can defeat the devil with the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God, I feel him. Hallelujah. 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 Revelation 12, 15, and the serpent or the devil cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away 
of the flood. Talking about Israel and the tribulation. How the devil's going to try to flood against Israel to destroy Israel. Judgment is coming. Genesis 7, 19, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. The people of Noah's day, they did not believe a flood was coming. Just like people today. Oh, they've heard it before. They heard mom and dad talk about it. They heard the grandparents. They heard some preacher tell them. But they don't believe that anymore. But what do you believe? Do you believe that you're going to live on forever on this earth? Do you believe somehow we're going to fix all the problems and have a utopia here on this earth? You can't ride very far down the road without finding a cemetery. You can't ride very far down the road without going past the hospital. You can't go very far down the road without finding a funeral home because it's appointed unto man once to die and after that to judgment. I want to tell you your life is just a vapor. Doesn't matter if you live to be a hundred years old. That's just a drop in the bucket. It's a vapor that appears here a third little time and vanish of away but every man shall give an account of himself unto God you're not going to stand before a preacher or before a church or a committee you're going to stand before your creator you're going to stand before almighty God and give an account of yourself they said oh we don't believe that at all that old funny daddy that old preacher Noah he doesn't know what he's talking about. They denied the possibility of a universal flood or that God would even do such a thing. You see, that's, that's what's happened to us today. We have made God out to be some doting father. Just, uh, just it's okay what you do. Uh, it's all right to live like you want to live. And people tell us you got to embrace everybody and be tolerant of everybody and it's all going to be well in the end. God hates sin. He hates sin. That's why he looked away from his own son when he hung on the cross because he had our sins. They might argue, they might say, well, you know, God is too merciful. He's too merciful to allow anyone to be judged and end up in hell. Jude 4 says, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, he said, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Jude said they've distorted the grace of God by saying that it allows them to live immoral lives. I've heard people say, well, we all sin. Can't help but sin. We all are sinners, they say. And they justify sinful living. And they say that God's grace is enough to cover them that regardless of how they live. But I want to know, I want us to know today he called us out of that. He called us out of darkness. He told the woman, go thy way and sin no more. You don't go back into the world. You don't, you don't go and live in sin during the week and come to church on Sunday and say, God, forgive me and go back out again the next day to the hog pins of the world. When you get right with God, you've got to walk right. You've got to live right. Not just on Sunday, but every day of the week. But they see God's grace as an opportunity to live like they want to live. The 120 years of Genesis 6 and 3 shows the long suffering of God prior to the judgment. Long suffering of God. God always gives space and time to repent. Look how long he's given us. Thank God for his mercy today. But Revelation 2 and 1 says, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. The Lord even gave Jezebel in the church at Thyatira, he gave her space or time to repent. She repented not. How many people have I heard say, I'm going to get right one of these days. One of these days, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to show up for church. One of these days, I'm going to turn the corner. One of these days, I, I'm going to turn the leaf on the page. One of these days, I'm going to change the calendar. One of these days, I'm going to start living for God. But the Bible says today is the day of salvation. There is no guarantee that any of us are going to leave this building today alive. No guarantee. We're near the coming of the Lord. We're also near death. Death is coming. 
And the Lord gave her space to repent and she repented not. No matter how much time passes, God's threat of judgment will happen. Every judgment that God foretold came to pass. The flood, he said it was going to happen and it did happen. The Sodom and Gomorrah destruction happened. He said it would happen. The Canaanites, Jericho, Babylon, Nineveh, and Jerusalem, all those judgments, he said would happen, came to pass. But judgment because it is delayed, because it doesn't happen right away. We think we've gotten by with sin, gotten away with sin. We poured one over on God and no, nothing's going to happen to us. But Ecclesiastes 8, 11 through 13 says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely... I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him, but it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Don't take the grace of God for granted because sin will pull you deeper and deeper in. It'll pull you so far under. Just because judgment hasn't come yet doesn't mean that it's not coming. Adam and Eve were deceived by the devil. They were deceived in believing that the penalty for their sins, the penalty of death was not going to come. And the devil told them, said, you will not surely die. He's still telling the same lie today. And so they did sin. And when they sinned, they did not immediately die. They were convinced that it was not going to happen. People have gone out and committed sin and they said, well, there was no lightning bolts. Uh, God didn't open up the earth and swallow me up. Nothing terrible happened, so I must be okay. And they thought everything was okay. But no, they began to die from that very moment. They would return to the, to the dust of the earth and they introduced into the human race death and destruction and trouble and evil things all because of their sin. What God says, he means it. He means what he says. If God reacted immediately, if he responded immediately when we sin, it would be over in that moment of time. Son would be dead right now because of fornicating last night or because of getting drunk last night but oh it's the mercy of God they said to Peter they said the Lord is not going to do such a thing we've heard the Lord is coming we've heard it all our lives but things just keep going on as they've always gone on nothing has changed everything is still happening the way it's always happened we've never seen anything like this happen but Peter said you forgot about the flood don't forget about Noah's flood he said the only reason the Lord hasn't come yet is because he's long suffering Suffering to us word, not willing that any perish, but all come to repentance. But all too often his goodness and patience are abused by stubbornness and pride and selfishness. But you can be sure the time will come when the patience of God will be exhausted. And judgment will surely come, as the scripture says, the flood before the flood. The flood before the judgment. There's a flood of evil. You can be sure that the flood of God's judgment is on the way. It was a judgment on men and women who had given themselves over to a life of sin. I'm glad he saved me. I'm glad to know I'm saved today. Have no doubts about it, I'm saved. My sins are under the blood. He's washed away my sins. He's cleansed me of all unrighteousness. And he's made me whole, praise God. And my name is in the Lamb's book of life. I'm looking for Jesus to come. I'm ready to go should he call me today. Hallelujah. I want our musicians and singers if they will to come. But a greater judgment is coming upon this earth. A time of Jacob's trouble, the Bible says. Noah's flood was simply a warning to mankind. All these scriptures are given to us. For an example, the scripture says, we're seeing a flood before the flood. We're seeing a flood of evil and iniquity today before the flood of judgment. Noah's generation had never seen rain before. Genesis 2 and 6, but there went up a mist. God had his own watering system from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And when Noah said God was going to destroy the world with a flood, they didn't believe him. 
They, they said it can't happen. I can hear the scientists and the learned men of that day saying it's not going to happen. You can only imagine how they mocked and how they ridiculed Noah. You can only imagine. And they said, oh, it's not going to happen. But even after the flood, even after six over 6,000 years, even after all this time, man continues to ridicule and continues to scoff and continues to mock. But one of these days, this preacher is going to preach for the last time. One of these days, we're going to assemble for the last time. We're at the end of the last days, and we're running out of time. Would you stand with me, please, all over the church? Hallelujah, hallelujah. While the heads are bowed just a moment, the saints are praying. Father, we're so thankful for your mercy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Thankful, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your love today. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be looking, to be watching, to be praying, to be ready. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Help us, oh God, not to excuse sin, not to embrace sin, not to continue to live in sin, and oh God, to know there's only one door of escape. There's only one means of escape. And just as you got Noah out before the flood of judgment came, you're going to get the church out before the flood of judgment comes on this earth. The judgment was not for Noah and his family, but the judgment was for sinful man upon the earth. Judgment's coming upon this land. And oh God, they refuse to hear. But let him that has ears, let him hear the Spirit is saying to the church let me ask you today whether saints of God are praying do you know that Jesus Christ lives in your heart do you know that you're saved washed in the blood of the Lamb do you know that you're ready to meet the Lord or does there have to be some confessing some repenting going on do you need to make your calling and election sure well now's the time today is the day God is speaking to your heart if you're not saved Whatever you do, don't walk out of this building in the same condition that you came. But you can leave today with joy in your heart and peace in your life, knowing that everything's all right between you and God. What a dreadful day that was. When people tried to make their way to the ark, but it was too late. It was too late. When the storm clouds rolled in, the rain began to pour, it was too late. And one of these days, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. But the door is still open today. The opportunity is still here this morning. Today you can come to Jesus. Come to him. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. It's the greatest thing, greatest decision you'll ever make is to come to Jesus Christ. You can leave today. You can say, I know that regardless of what happens tomorrow, I'm ready. I'm ready because Jesus has forgiven me of my sins and he lives in my heart. Would you come today? Come on, would you come? Let the Lord minister to you. Let him help you. Hallelujah. Maybe the devil's really been giving you a difficult time. You feel the effects of the flood of evil around you. It's affecting all of us. It's an oppressive spirit. So many are in depression. So many are fighting, struggling, trying to stay afloat. And today the Lord said, I want to lift you up on higher ground. I want to lift you up into heavenly places and restore your joy and restore your peace. If that's you today, would you come? Make your way to the altar and say, Lord, would you lift me up today? You haven't fallen, you haven't backslidden, but you just need a spiritual uplift. You need the Lord to restore the song in your heart, the joy in your soul, the peace in your mind. Come home today, will you? Oh, you've been beaten down. The enemy has beaten you down with the cares of life and the problems of life, but the Lord today wants to heal your broken heart. He wants to touch your troubled mind. He wants to minister to you, but you've got to give him opportunity. Come on, would you? God bless these that are coming. God bless you. Oh, I feel him here today. Hallelujah. He's here to speak to us, to minister to us. All over the building, as many of them would like to come and pray, would you come? If you can't come, would you pray right where you are? Let the pew in front of you become an altar for you. Get a hold of God. Let the Lord touch you. Oh, help us, Lord, to be ready. Help us to be watching. Help us to keep our eyes on the prize, our hand on the plow, and our feet on the promise.